Rosco prati gatos kata elakom prati gos kata la mande rado koshata manda ba yala basa elakuri yala mande koshata mako prati gatos sapra yala mande koshaya. Oh, we give you praise of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. All right, you may have your seat. This is the devotion. At certain times, so the engines can be running, so it can steam and not, um, you know, get cold. Amen. Amen. So I said that to say to you that in the same vein, you know, sometimes you don't just go six hours without being conscious of the spirits. Hallelujah. Two hours just praying tongues. Whether for five, you know, it could just be for a minute, it could just be for two minutes. It just keeps that consciousness that you are a spirit being. Amen. Amen. And because that's your spirituality is your advantage. Otherwise, you are just like an ordinary man. How I many of you watch Incredible Hawk? There's this Incredible Hawk in the 80s. I think they should have repeated it. The guy gets active when there's, when there's pressure, when there's issue. It's normal when everything is normal. But when there's a problem or something, it increases in size. Amen. So at every time, two hours, three hours, five hours, Increase in size. There's someone increasing size. Pray in tongues of the spirit and be spiritually conscious. I've had a beautiful time, you know, right from the praise and worship to the um, enlightenment, right? Very powerful teachings on leadership. And then also the enlightenment segment talked about um, how to cope with cold weather. It's pretty hot disease. I mean... One thing she didn't add is that, you know, one of the ways to cope is just come out at night. Just go and sleep outside. <laughs> Amen. Pretty hot. But it's okay. When you wake up with sweat, just pray till they break. It's a way to keep you praying. If prayer does not wake you up, sweat, heat will wake you up. Because this period, we have to be spiritual. Hallelujah. All right, let's just go through our devotional very quickly and then we take some moment to pray and get ourselves ready for God's word. Our man of God is around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, quickly, you know, I will just read through. Let's read together. You know, Love Light Devotional. Today's topic is Christianity is not your custom. 
Christianity is not your custom. Don't get confused about it. Christ is our custom. But he's saying that Christianity, what tribe are you? Igbo. Are you Igbo or Igbo? Igbo. Igbo. He says it's Igbo. You are, you are Igbo. All right. <laughs> Amen. Christianity is not your custom. It's not your Igbo. It's not your Yoruba. It's not your house. Neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For all, for ye all, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Galatians 3 from 28. Praise God. Next, let's take our first paragraph. Beloved, Christianity is not subject to any known custom or tradition in the world. That's why truth isn't regional but universal. So a truth in Nigeria is a truth in the United States. Praise God. It is, it is a crying shame that many have interpreted scriptures wrongly as such subjected Christianity to the rulings of, the tra of their tradition. This explains why some believers fail to separate their customs from the person of Jesus. Jesus was born a Jew, but Christianity is not Jewish. It is for everybody. Even the Jewish does not even recognize that, you know, Christ is God in the flesh. Yeah. So all of you that want to go to, not you here, that want to go to, uh, where is it now? Israel, to fear Christ. Amen. For we know no man according to the flesh. So it's not a Jewish Christian. It's a, it's a what can is a believer's Christian. Is a believer's Christ. Christ is not a Christ of the Jew. Is a Christ for all believers. Hallelujah. Let's take a, let's go. Next paragraph. So why does it seem like the truth is regional and not universal? Why does it seem like we serve a Jewish Jesus or even a Yoruba Jesus as the case may be? Failing to note that Jesus is neither Jewish nor Yoruba. This is the underlying reason, unbeknownst to them, they want to go to Israel to feel like they are, they've seen the almighty God. Listen, that was where God chose to bring the incarnate Christ from. It could have been anywhere else if he had willed it so. Amen. Christ could have come from Lagos. Christ could have come from anywhere. So the fact that he came from Israel, from the you know, from the um, Jews. Doesn't mean that Christ is Jewish. Last paragraph. In Paul's letter to the church, he didn't fail to mention that there is neither Jew nor Greek, but we are all one in Christ. So why do we have associations in church based on tribal differences? Aren't we supposed to be one? Having been immersed in him, the church is the ground and pillar of truth. Once you take the truth away from the church, there is no church. It becomes a social gathering. It is the truth, which is Jesus, that is taught in the church that makes it the church of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise God. Hallelujah. Were you blessed by that? Yes, All right, let's take our confession. Let's stand to our feet and take our faith confession. And then pray afterwards and get our hearts ready for the word. Say, I think as a member of Christ... Thus, I don't subject him to an earthly tradition. Oh, one more time. I think as a member of Christ, thus, I don't subject him to an earthly tradition. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, let's just pray in the spirit so much God has prepared for us this morning. So, you know, let's prepare ourselves to receive what God has prepared for us. Let's pray in other tongues and just get ourselves in the mood, you know, to receive the word. There's one thing for God to have so much for us. It's another thing for us to receive the word. There should be a hunger in our spirit for the world. There should be a desire. The Bible says, blessed are they that hunger and test, for they shall be filled. So we stir up that hunger in our hearts. So we shut off every, we shut out every distraction and we keep our eyes 
eyes on Jesus. We keep our ears. He said, my son, incline your ears to my saying. So as a man of God speaks God's word, speaks God's will, this morning we are receiving, we are receiving, we are receiving, we are receiving. So we prepare our heart, we speak to our soul and say, oh soul, hear the word of the Lord this morning. Mando sate, leko rabaga shandala mande, ko paratabasa, eleko prayala manda ko sataya. Make sure you're praying and shut out every distraction in the name of Jesus and declare and decree that this service is my service. This service is my service. In this service, I'm going to experience increased favor because that's what God has said to us this year. And we say, because He has said, we say, we are Molobia His world. We are we are sensitive to the word. We are we are conscious of that word. And tonight or today, we experience increased favor in service in the name of Jesus. Jesus. and God also said to us in this month that is a month of great speed and accuracy we receive grace grace for great speed and accuracy in the name of Jesus we acknowledge of God that you are your word you are your word you are your word we don't joke with your word we follow your word of God only the and so we are excited to receive from you this morning excited to receive from you this morning excited to be instructed of your word this morning excited to be at the front of your word this morning excited to get better because your word says our gathering must be for the better our gathering must be for the better hello satalamanda kori alamanda kosa as we receive your word we allow the workings of the world in our hearts in our lives of God and produce a new us and produce a better us and produce a beautiful us. Hello, Sakrai Alamande Kosata, Rado Shandele Brokori Alamande. We know your presence is here this morning and we acknowledge your presence. We acknowledge your presence. We acknowledge your presence. Is at work in us, working out healing, working out healing. Walking out your wheel, strengthening us, oh God. Let go, Santa Bayate, Hella Bakoria La Mande. Will we be ministered to in a great way, in a great way, in a great way? Let go, Santa Rada Bashanda, Echo Rabako Shata. Our lives will not remain the same. Questions will be answered, doubts will be dissolved. In the name of Jesus, your light will be revealed. Let go, Santa Bande Kosa. Our mindset of Christ will be straightened in the name of Jesus. The eyes of understanding will be enlightened. Hello, Kopayala Manda Kosata. And not only are we knowing your will this morning, we are empowered to walk in it. We are empowered to walk in it. Let go, Parona Kopayala Manda Kosata. Rando Shatala Mande with the green is an awesome service, a service of the Spirit. An awesome service, a service of the spirit, an awesome service, a service of the spirit. Marco Paro de Coria la Mande Cosa, Rado Chata la Mande Cosa, Le Copa Ro de Copa, Ella Macoria la Mande Cosa, Hello Santa la Mande, El Copa Ro de Baca Shanta, El Dolo Broco Santa la Mande, Ella Macoria la Mande Cosa, Needs a bet, needs a bet, needs a bet. People are encouraged, Hello Sapa. And also go Rabatesa, Ella Bakoria la Mande. Oh, what an encounter we have this morning in your presence, in your presence, in your presence. There's fullness of joy at your right hand, your pleasures forever. Hello, go Parona Bako Shanda, Lego Satala Mande, an excellent seven of these of God, an excellent seven of these of God. Oh, go Parona Koria la Mande, and oh, Sataba, Ella Papa Roba da. Shanta, and Copa Roda Boko Santa, Hello, Cosiata la Mande, Lego Bo Shata la Manda Cosa, and Copa Roda Copia la Mande, Ella Copa Yola Baba Cosanta, and Copa Roda Baba Shata, Ella Copia la Mande Cosa, your word will come on God, so simple, so simple, so simple, and understanding of God is granted all of us in the name of Jesus. We'll comprehend everything you 
speak to us this morning. And the Procoria la Pacasha, and Toka Pate, Ele Papa Roba de Cosa, Ele Macoria la Pate Cosata, Ele Papa de Cosate, La Palo, Sapala Bayate, Ele Pacoria la Pate Cosata, Le Coria la Pate Co, Barro Paco Shanta, and when we enjoy the fulfillment of the fellowship with the brethren, the fulfillment of the fellowship with the brethren, and Papa Rome de Lebosa, Mando Santa la Mande, and Corra. You have free toss in this place this morning. Your deal is done. Testimonies we are power. Testimonies we are power. Testimonies we are power. For your word will prevail.
bless the name of the Lord. Give him praise. Thank him. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. Thank him. Oh, we give you praise. We honor you, Lord. We bless your name, O oh God. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Give him praise and bless his name. Hallelujah. Give him praise and thank you. Shande lava go si balada hai. Enke bolon de spira da kabo shanda lada hai. Oh, give him praise. Thank you. children will be edified, the eyes of understanding will be enlightened, revelation knowledge will flow, and the burdens of ignorance will be dematerialized. The sick will be healed, the oppressed will be free, and needs will be met by the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, blessed Father, for in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, amen. church this morning. Yes, sir. Glory to God. So we've been, we've been, and I believe we'll be able to learn very greatly in that teaching. Amen. Amen. But like I said, we'll touch many other angles and many other areas. Um, absolutely. Hallelujah. The Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Are you happy to be in church? Yes, sir. Sure. Yes, sir. We want to welcome every one of you following us from around the world. Put your hands together for them. <laughs> PLBC GRA, we greet you. PLBC TV Road, we greet you. <laughs> Hallelujah. PLBC Portacot, PLBC Asaba, PLBC IUO. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wales, um, yeah, Bundesfeed, Finland, all the different places in Canada, put your hands together. And any other place you're watching us from, we want to say we love you and we specially recognize you. Amen. Amen. In a few minutes, if your phones are still on, we'd like you to just share the link. Uh, on your social media platform and afterwards you turn off your phone or you put it on silence. Um, there's a video we watched over the week of an old man who while the, the pastor was preaching, he was watching naked women. I'm not sure if, I don't know if I share that video, but I'll, I'll find it and share it. So that's the temptation you get when you're in the service and you are flipping your phones. Don't even use your phone to look for scriptures. We'll show you here. Amen. Because while you're trying to use your phone to look for scriptures, there's that temptation to say, let me just check Facebook. And then you get logged out of the service. 
But right now, because we want to help those who are not in church, those who will not go to church, who are at home to be able to connect with service, we're asking you to share it now. So broadcast it on your timeline, Facebook. All you need to do is PLBC TV on YouTube. And then in, on Facebook, it is Perfect Love Believer Centers. We're upgrading. Okay, because we had Pastor Preston Idoro and we had Pastor Preston P. Idoro, we decided to change one to Perfect Love Believer Centers. Okay, that's the Pastor Preston P. Idoro. And that's where we always shoot live from Facebook. Amen. So, uh, for, but for me, what I do is I broadcast the one on Facebook on my timeline, which is Pastor Preston Idoro. And then I um, copy the link of the one on YouTube and broadcast that one on WhatsApp, right? And then I share the Facebook on, on Messenger. So you can do the same thing. Let's have more people connect with the service. We cannot have them be at home and be scrolling and watching all manner of dirty stuff on the internet. Amen? Amen? Once you do that, you switch off your phone so we don't get distracted. New things this year. Amen? Amen. If we want to better here, we'll bring in some new stuff. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Help me welcome someone to church. Can you help me do that? Just welcome somebody. Tell them they're looking good. And you are in your father's house. Amen. Can we push this volume a little bit? Or maybe I'm just the one not hearing very Can you hear me very well? Yes, push it a bit, please. They, they can't hear me very well. And I hope they can hear online, too. Uh, media people, can they hear very well? Good. So push it for those in the church. You don't necessarily need to push the mic. You just need to push the monitors. That's what you need to do. Amen. And then push the ones that are from the back more. Glory to God. Let's not waste our time because they already said, don't waste our, don't preach too long. <laughs> All these pastors are trying to control me. And they forgot that the spirit of the prophet is subject to the, to the prophet and not the pastors. Amen. Amen. Okay, you're going to enjoy. Can we, can we go this morning? Yes, sir. We'll find a way to get a TV here so it doesn't come just here. Amen. So many things we'll do this year by God's grace. We're planning towards that. We're thinking of putting a screen here and also in Benin and all that. It's our Father's house. Amen. Amen. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. Praise okay. Are you ready? Yes, so the, the East service was loaded. If you missed it, you missed the Lord. If you missed the e-service, you missed a lot. So many things were spoken very greatly. But let me just quickly do a quick rewind. I also understand that they did some of them, some of that um, to you already. And it was powerful. At the end of the service, we started to pray. We started to prophesy. And we got instant healing. Someone with spinal cord uh, issue was healed. Someone that had a pain on the lap was healed. If you remember, I mentioned those cases. I've forgotten the third one now. So, uh, my green headache here was healed. So all that and many more, the Lord did. So it was clear that when we teach a thing like that, it follows immediately. We're talking to you about faith and God was proven that. Hallelujah. Amen. So um, I remember told you on that e-service very quickly um, um, where in John 1, 11, it says, uh, from 10, it says, Jesus came to his own and they received him not and they received him not. Okay? And then the next verse says, as many that received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. Now take note, as many that received him, not as many that saw him, not as many that found him, it was as many that received him. And if you remember, I told you the word received was para labano. Okay, you see, there's the word labano who are, that has several other branches. But this one was para labano. Okay, so that begins to define a place of honor that comes from belief, right? That means there should be an understanding. Now, why will this be from God's perspective? You know, someone could say, well, but they have a reason not to believe him. They had a reason not to receive him. After all, a stranger just showed up. No. The prophets that showed up were teaching about him for so long a time. Remember Jesus said to them, if you had received Moses, you would have known me. He said, he preached about me. He said it very clear. 
And he says, unfortunately, you believe Moses, but you don't believe me. And he says, it's Moses who accused you before my father. He says, I don't accuse you, right, before my father. As a matter of fact, he defends you, but not accused you. So that means... God was not fair to say, or that principle was not fair to say, as many that received him, they had reason not to, to receive him. No, people have been preaching about him up until John. If you read from that same first John, from 5, it says, and John showed up in the scene, right? And then he was a forerunner of Jesus Christ. So it's about receiving God. So you see, like I'm preaching here now, everyone will not receive the same way. It is based on the honor that you have for me for the work sake, not for me as a person. Oh, I like Pastor Preston. I just like him because maybe he's cool. No, you like Pastor Preston because of the truth of God's word that he labors with. That's the honor line. Are you following me? It says in Thessalonians, it says, esteem them very highly because they are nice guys or because they are amazing, because they're cute. No, for their work sake. What work? Timothy tells us. He says, those who labor with revelation knowledge. How are you following that? Those who labor with revelation knowledge. And I showed you on, on Friday, if you still remember, he went to his hometown. The Bible says he could not do mighty miracles. Why? Because they knew him differently. Oh, is he not the son of the carpenter? Did we not know his, 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 his brothers, his siblings? Were his sisters not with us? Right? So he could not do much miracle. That's how they knew him as. Now watch this. Jesus came from, follow this, from uh, Mary to have a form upon the earth. But where he truly came from was the father. Okay, in John chapter number one, still, it says, it says, he tells us very clearly, it says, the, the him that, you know, that showed up from above. It says, it says, the father displayed. Let me try to show you that. Give me 18. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Look at it. No man had seen God at any time. Watch. The only begotten son, which is in the bosom of the father. He had God, he had declared him. Are you seeing that? Now, this is his true source. Not Mary. But you see, they perceived him from Mary. And because they perceived him from Mary, they could not receive the blessings that was from above. Because from Mary, he had nothing of divine to offer. He only had something of sense to offer. Oh, follow me very closely. So, so that's why he says you, you, don't, you, you, you receive a prophet, right, as unto the Lord. Follow me. No, we no man according to the flesh. So, for example, if you receive me as one known in the flesh, all you could get to be blessed of will be everything that is of sense. Because of flesh, our best, our best that we can offer is of sense. But if you receive me from the Father, then you can receive the supernatural that comes of the Father. Please follow this very closely. Now, why can you receive me from the Father? Because when I got born again, I got born into another source. Are you following this? First Peter chapter number 1 from verse number 23. Being born, not of corruptible seed, but of the word incorruptible, right, which liveth and abided well, forever. Right? Being born, not of corruptible seed. So there's another born. Right? In John 3, in John 3 chapter number 3, it says, He said, The man be born again, he cannot see the, the kingdom of God. He said, The man be born again. And not Tom, which means from above, he cannot see. In verse number five, he clarifies it very properly because uh, Nicodemus couldn't understand what he was talking about. And then he explained more and says, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit. Hold on. So being born again, listen, 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 get this very clear. Being born again is not to say, well, I'm born again now, I believe Jesus. No, no. Being born again means to be born of the water and of the spirit because it talks about being born from above, right? And from above is to be 
to be washed of the water, right, which introduces the spirit to have full course in you. Now, watch this. Watch this. To be born from above, he says to be born of the water, right? What is the water, right? In Ephesians chapter number 4, verse number 26 and 27, tells you that the water is the word, okay? So, that means you are born again. Listen to this. Listen to this. Because while I teach tonight, it's going to be interesting. Now you begin to check yourself and say, how well am I born again? Because when human ideology still persists with you, you are still born of this word. That's why I say, oh, I'm born again. Yes, that's good. But you see, you see, that activity has an action that follows up because you could be sleeping back. That's why Jesus will tell you very profoundly from John chapter number 15. He will say, abide in me and my word in you. Glory to God. Abide in me and my word in you. You have to continue to abide. It's not a one-time thing. You have to continue to abide. In so many other scriptures I'm going to show you as time proceeds. Hebrews 3.13, I like to quote that one. Exhort yourself while it's caught today, 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 lest you be had it. Exhort yourself while it's caught today. Why should you exhort while it's caught today? Because you need the keep to keep cleaning up, right? Simple, simple, and I'm going to put it straight. The Holy Spirit said to me this morning, he says, why, why do we put a terminology like that so they can understand properly? He says, do you find anybody who baits, who takes his bath once and forever? How often do you bathe? At least once a day, right? Every day. Why? Now watch this, watch this. If I take my bath and I stay in my room and I didn't go out, so there was no doors that captured me out, can I stay there for one week and not bathe, except you're in the prison or you're in the cell? By the next day you will bathe. Even maybe that evening you are bathing again. And you know in this summer time period we are, are bathing at random now. Except you've not been feeling the heat. You can't even calculate anymore. Except you don't have water, right? Praise the Lord. Preaching good. Why? Because somehow you get dirty. Somehow. So they say, oh, the one I, the message I had on Sunday was too much. There's, well, which one is not this one we're hearing again in the East service? Which one is not this one again we're hearing? Because you need to keep hearing it. Don't forget the scenario. I, I'm beginning to give a lot of scenarios now. Amen? You know the one about the eating food, right? Now I'm talking to you about baiting now. Because naturally as you interact with this word, unbelief comes to you. So if you don't go to God's word intentionally often, listen to this and listen well, you cannot sustain faith. So he says, as men that received them, to them he gave power. So, so, you can only use God's power because you receive, paralabanu, you receive, which demonstrates the fact that you honor him and which express the fact that you have received him as one that came from above. One that came from above and not from this earth. Hallelujah. Are you following this? The same Jesus who could do so mighty great things in many other places could not do because they were too familiar with his earthly roots that they could not be blessed of his heavenly source. Did you get that? They could not be blessed of his heavenly source. Go ready, God. Now, so all the time you hear that word, your faith has made you whole, it's not just a cliche. It's not just some kind of language to just speak all the time by Jesus because he always said it. Because the truth is, it is not all of Jesus that brings the healing. It is Jesus and your faith. Follow this very closely. It is what? Jesus and your faith. And your faith, the substance of things hoped for, Hebrews 11.1, and the evidence of things not seen. And of course, we stressed it in one of the services, I hope you connected, where we said faith needs to have substance. Where is the substance tagged from? The word. The word. It has to have a substance. Amen. The substance does not need to be physically seen. 
It is the evidence of things not seen. But he has to have a substance because it says faith that is seen is not faith. And then recently I told you, I said, the scripture says hope make it not ashamed. I said, but the only will make not ashamed. Okay, let's, let's read that. Mm, I think I mentioned in one of the ending of the service very quickly and we, we left there. Every teaching left scattered, we must balance. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I love my church. You love this church? Yes, Glory to God. Okay, let's come there. Romans chapter number five. Uh, maybe I'll start from one. I, um, it would have been from three to five, but let's start from one. I've not started preaching. When I start preaching, I'll tell you. Uh, I'm not, okay, I've, I've started preaching. I've not started the message. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay, being, therefore being justified by faith. What did you say justified by? Faith, not works. Take note. By what? As a matter of fact, Abraham was the father of faith. He was justified by faith, right? If you, you want to get love that story, read it from Romans chapter number four. You get love that story. But you see, that guy was not a perfect guy. I'm going to talk to you a little bit on that. That's what we want to say. Uh, uh, the just shall live by faith. Hmm? I'll come back to this scripture. Therefore, being justified, justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Next verse. By whom also we have access by faith. So faith gives us what? Access. Don't forget that. Not access bank, but it gives us access. Amen. Glory to God. Okay, if it gives us access bank, oh, that would be good. But well, it could give you access bank if you, if you understand it as the theme. Faith is the substance of theme. Uh-huh. So you can give you not just access bank, both Zenith bank and all the banks. Amen. Okay. By faith we have access. Uh, by whom also we have access by faith into, the, into this grace wherein we stand. Into this grace where we stand. A lot of times people don't understand that faith has a grace. Why am I trying to get distracted, Pastor Preston? Try. Why am I? Why am I? As we're saying, grace. 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 Okay, Zechariah chapter number four from verse number six. Glory to God. When you know the word of God is good, your brain will just move. Huh? So I, I try to stay in one place, but I can't. Uh, because the more we travel around, the more you will understand. Huh? What do you think? Okay, Zechariah chapter number four. But what we're going is six, but let's start from four. You know this story very be- beautifully, but you don't see the six parts. And I'll show you the six part today. Zechariah chapter number four, four. Let's start from six, from six, from six. Amen. There's a seven part. Sorry, I was trying to say. Then he answered and spoke unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Jerusalem, uh, Jerubabel, Jeru- saying, Not by might, nor by power. Follow that. Not by what? Might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Next verse. Who art thou? We know this story a lot, except you've not been an old Christian. Who art thou, O great mountain? Remember, I already told you not by might, not by power. And we know it's might and power, you, you can push those things. But it says not by might, but by power. That means it's talking supernatural. Amen. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? So you could take your own now. Maybe there's some Zerubbabel before you. Right? Before Zerubbabel, that thou, that, that, look at it, Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plain. Thou shalt become a plain. Okay? Then it says, and he shall bring forth the headstone whereof with shouting, crying. Are you seeing it? Read that again. And he shall bring forth the headstone, therefore, with shouting, crying, grace, grace unto. So faith is by grace. Faith is by grace. Now, you know, I was telling you something. I said, if faith is not by grace, it's arrogance. The people who have arrogantly died. Oh, I have faith. Oh, and then, no, it has to be by grace, not by works. I'll show you how this works. I'll show you how this works. When you see someone say things like, ha, I have to go and pray. I have to go and pray. This devil needs to know. This devil needs to know. If I pray, you will see. You are wrong, oh. Listen, listen, listen. Oh. You are wrong. Prayer is good. I emphasize in this ministry. I've prayed severally this morning before I came here. I even prayed for the pastors before I came here. And I still pray. But let me explain this. If you are not careful, you will be drawn to strength when you approach prayer. Great many people were healed or received great miracles without praying. 
but just trusting someone else, which was Jesus. The centurion did not pray. They didn't give him hours to fast and pray. Are you there? The blind that was healed, the, the lames that were, 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 you know, they were not told to go pray for hours. That's why you have to be careful about these people who come to tell you things about, eh, uh, uh, if I don't pray, Satan will make mess of me. Huh? Everyone would have died. If that is, is, is correct. You know many times you, have not, you did not pray. In fact, there's some things that came sometimes. You say, Lord, I can't pray. Just help me. Help, me. help your daughter like this. And God helped you. Are you there? Yes, sir. And I like to always mess, mess those people's mind, bust their bubbles. And I say something like, they came to me, Jesus. I said, hey, look, look, John's disciples are praying. <laughs> they thought just going to say, oh, that's true. I just realized. Forgive me. He messed their mind up. He says, why would they pray when the comforter is right there? Amen. Amen. You only pray when God tells you to pray. You pray when you see your faith is far. So you are trying to use faith to draw it close. Because with the faith with you, the result comes. It will come. Are you following me? So look what they were shouting. Grace, grace. They were not shouting strength, power. Ah, it was our works. Are you noticing that? Because earlier in the scripture already told you, not by power, not by might. So hardened people, I'm going to talk to you about it a lot this morning. Hardened people need to pray to break the hardness of heart. We suffer to receive from God because we are hardened. And a lot of times we are hardened because we are far from the reality of God's word in our heart. The substance of God's word in our heart. I'll tell you, many people believe and say a lot of things and say, I believe God, but truly you don't believe God. If you say you believe God, you will not be adding the other thing you added to it. Except God told you to add it to it. So actually, when you say you believe God, you are trying to believe God. Now, let me shock you now. Are you following me this morning? Do you realize that belief is not a gift? (laughs) Glory to God. In all the gifts of the Spirit, there was no thing as belief as a gift. Because it is a present hour built up substance. The word in your heart will determine your belief in God. Now, let me show you. Do you know an unbeliever can believe more than a Christian? That's why a lot of the people who Jesus healed in his time were more unbelievers. Now, watch. Why did they even believe him? They believed Jesus. I was going to do a lot of exegesis on that, but the Lord says, you, you make the service too long. So, I'll come on that another day. Right? But go do your own exegesis. You realize that the people, the un- unbelievers, so to speak, who were not Jews, who got more healed in the days of Jesus... They believed Jesus because of the report that they heard. So, if one guy hear that Jesus healed him, listen to this, they'll say, ha, ah, so this guy, they heal. Not necessarily that they believe he was the son of God. No, no, they just believe say they heal. So, this guy, they heal, right? Ha, ah, me too, I'm going to go collect my own. And once they go to Jesus Christ, do you believe? Say yes, they receive. But the other guys will just say, no. There are too much knowledge of God's word according to Moses was a hindrance from being blessed by the ministry of Jesus. Are you following me? No, I'm not sure you understand. A new member can just walk in this church now and just receive a, a miracle you have been praying for. You are praying for it too. You are sowing seed for it too. But you really don't believe. But he walked in and saw me on white and said, see Jesus. And then he collected. But you st- stood there and said, see Pastor Preston, that guy that gave me a high five. <laughs> Preaching good? Yes, sir. Now, can I shock you? You know all the scriptures. He doesn't know all the scriptures. You know all my gesticulations. He doesn't know all of them. In fact, is that too many know that you know that's causing you problem? You don't even know. <laughs> Glory to God. Preaching good. So, when you are praying in the spirit, when you are fasting in the spirit, is to take you of what you know that brings familiarity into the place of what you should be knowing that brings you the blessing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Are you still here? Hallelujah. 
So it says, crying grace, grace. So it's of grace. Grace. Grace is a capacity. Having an information of something, right? Of course, primarily of Christ, because Christ is grace. Okay? Christ is grace. When, when, we say, when you say, I preach the grace message, what you're trying to say is, I preach Christ, because Christ is grace. Grace came by what? John 1, 17. What did he say? The law was given by Moses, but grace came by Jesus. So, to grace is Christ. But in this case, right, they really did not know Christ, so to speak, as because he had not shown up, Jesus had not shown up. So, when they now say grace, grace, then they'll be saying an ability of God as against what their human ability could have done. So, they were hanging on another and not in themselves. Okay, so come back to Romans. Look at it, by grace, truth, by Jesus Christ. Romans 5, we're reading. So, so put it on your mind. Grace, uh, uh, faith is by grace. As a matter of fact, so that would mean that grace is the substance of faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. So the substance of faith will be grace that you are hanging on. And grace will be Christ. What is of Christ, which will be of the word, which will be of the word. It comes back again, right? Which will be of the word. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was hallelujah. So by whom also we have access by faith into this grace. Who oh, are like that. By whom we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Next verse. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also. I like that. Glory to God. It says we glory in tribulation also. Why, why can't we glory in tribulation also? Why can't we glory in tribulation? Why? Why can we? Because we read that faith in the next verse of Hebrews 11, it says, by it the elders obtain a good report. Remember? By it the elders obtain a good report. And then he begins to state the elders. And you saw where it says, certain women endured even unto death. So they will be in the resurrection. So even with faith, we endure pain. Now, let me say this. Let me say this. When you find someone getting into trouble, and then he begins to murmur, he begins to complain, he begins to grumble, he begins to even ask God all manner of questions and all that, you know that he's not been thoroughly furnished of the word. You know that he lacks faith. Right? You can use complain, murmur, and grumble to blackmail God to do what he wants to do. I'm telling you, many have died murmuring. In fact, getting close to the time of their death, they will even curse God and they will still die. You can't blackmail Jesus. You can't blackmail God. You need to just play according to the rule. Play according to the rule. Instead of blackmail Jesus, beg him. Are you there? Jesus says, you don't have faith. He says, oh Lord, help my own belief. He was begging him. Help my own belief. All the seed I have been given, all the whatever I've been doing, uh, and, and, and you are now living in this condition, you will die. You. Are you the first to give seed? People have done it more. But your seed can be a substance. Are you there? You say, oh Lord, I, I can't, <laughs> if I die, you know this money I'm giving every, every two weeks or every... I, I still love to give it to. You know, you know he's paying some people's salary. You know he's, he's putting the media up there and all that. So that, that's probably what that guy says. He, he, the dead cannot, cannot praise you. Now, what does that do? Watch this. That does not convince God. Because God is a constant. That convinces you that God can heal you. That God can help you. That God can do it. And once you come to that substance... I like what the Archbishop says. He says, if your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Now, take note of the word. God cannot say no. Because he's the one that put the principle. The action and the result of God of faith is not an active action of God. It's a structural action of God. Now, follow me on this now. There is an active action of God. Hmm? Are you learning good? Yes, sir. It is of love. 
That means when you display some kind of love, God will be moved and take an action. But faith, it's a system. Like when you say, throw this thing up, it will come down. So if you have faith, the result will come. It's a system. Are you there? So that's why, notice, that's why anytime Jesus is going to heal someone or someone is asking for healing, please take note, anytime Jesus is going to heal someone and someone is asking for healing, Jesus never says, Lord, do you want me to heal them? Did you notice? Lord, do you want me to heal them? Lord, what do you think? Lord, has this guy done good enough for me to heal them? Are you seeing? No, you don't get all that. What does he say? He will ask the individual who is asking for healing, do you have faith? Because that's the condition. If there is faith and I have power, you'll be healed. So as I'm preaching now, you can be receiving healing without laying hands on you. All you need to do is to believe that God can heal you and I'm an instrument to do that and you receive it. It's in Acts 14. Why Paul preach? The guy was lame if I'm right. Or he had the predicament. Paul saw him. Paul could not do nothing. Paul started preaching. While Paul preached and preached and preached, he looked at the guy and saw that the guy now had, now had faith to be healed. Then he healed him. So if the guy did not have faith to be healed, Paul will finish the sermon and go. Because let me tell you, in the first place, we are not the healer. God is the healer. Yes, we are instruments to that healing. Look at it. The same heard Paul speak. Acts 14, 9. I was right by Acts 14. Who steadfastly beholding him and perceived that he had faith to be healed. Right? He perceived. Paul was speaking. What about the case of Peter? Every time he walks to the gate of beautiful, the guy is there, always wanting hams. Now, notice, Peter didn't go this time and say, you're always wanting hams. So now, be healed. He will not be healed. Mm -mm. Watch. He spoke first before doing what he needed to do. He said, silver and gold have I now. That means, oh God, not get money to give you today. Then I said, such as I have. That means he's not telling him, I have another thing to give you. Are you following? Then he says, Rise up and walk. Did he walk? Even with the substance. So he had to jack him. Are you following you me now? And while he jacked him, so the guy became, the reality came. He scattered his unbelief. If he had not jacked him, as a son of I have, I have received, the guy will not receive. Are you following me? One time, I think it was in Benin. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Right? So, I said, in the name of Jesus, the anointing is going to bust here now. And I said, take the anointing. Everybody was falling by the anointing. And then there was someone who the Spirit of God wanted to receive that anointing. Nothing happened. So, I looked at the person. I saw that he was looking at me like this. So, I said, okay, I see. <laughs> see. So, by just that looking at me like this, he's rejecting his anointing. So, I got off from the, the puppet. I still remember. So, I walked up. As I walked up, I said, raise your hand up. I didn't need to speak to him. I said, raise your hand up. He raised his hand up. I said, close your eyes. Because that opening your eyes is the problem. Now I said, close your eyes. <laughs> so he closed his eyes. I said, be there like that. Because the eyes was closed now, but the mind was still there. So the eyes are still open. I said, just close it. You know, that becomes a punishment. Close your eyes and raise your hand up. As it was there. So I walked down somewhere. As I was going, this said, oh, now, 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 this guy has, has left sense. Come back, come back. So I said, can't say, take it. Everywhere. Brrr. I knew what the Lord wanted to do initially. But that opening eye. Are you still there? Yes, and he got blessed. You know, but, but watch this. Some of them might just say, Ha, ah, but God, you told me this guy needs to receive something. How come you didn't receive it? I gave the anointing. Even other people, you did not tell me we're receiving things. The guy did not receive. I understand the word of God. So I, I'm not querying God. I just need to, What is, what? Oh, I see. Because once sense is activated, faith is de- deactivated. Did you hear me? Faith is deactivated. Glory to God. Say, I have done it. And but they said, but but they said, 
But they said, Praise for someone. And while I was done praying for the person, I, I wanted to go on YouTube to check some of the things about that situation and the rest of them. The Holy Spirit said, once you finish checking, you will destroy the prayers. I said, sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. No need. So I called the person over. I said, their child is well. <laughs> he said, but sir, I am still... I said, will you shut up? Well, just give her the evening. If he doesn't get well, go to the hospital. So, okay, okay, sir. Okay, sir. I said, you, you, that okay, sir, is not believe okay, sir. I said, hey, 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 hold on. I said, I have been healing the sick for many years. Not today. Now, you know what I'm trying to do now? I'm trying to make the unbelief to believe. Otherwise, that child will be, will be jeopardizing the life of that child now because of this stupid unbelief of the mother. And I can understand why the mother is having unbelief because you know when you give birth to a child, your brain will not run through nine months pregnancy and everything and say, I beg, let me just go to the hospital before, before. So I had to share testimonies upon testimonies. And when I saw that the faith was lifting up, I said, so that same anointing that did all, all others has done this one. Did you hear me? Yes, sir. So, watch. So I told her, I didn't stop there. I said, so what do you want to do now? I said, I, I just want to uh, sleep. I said, no, don't sleep. Because once you start to sleep, you're thinking. I said, go and get to do something. Go and do. I distracted her to go and do something. While she was doing it, and I called her up and I said, how far? Go and check your baby. Oh, I even forgot to. Oh. And when the, the child was already running and playing and everything. Oh, how's the temperature? Fine now. I said, and it's not like I was doubting you. So I said, shut up. You were doubting. <laughs> you're doubting. Are you still here? Look at it. And he took him up and he took him by the hand. Uh -huh. What did he do? And lifted him up. And immediately, his feet and ankle bones received strength. So strength did not come all the time he spoke. All what he was speaking was to give faith in the mind. But when he lifted him up, like I said, he shook the guy's doubt. I'm telling you. I'm not saying so there are some people you have to give a dirty slap for a miracle. There are some people you just blow breeze. Because that dirty slap, oh, I hope you understand what I'm saying. That dirty slap will reset their mind out, out of sense. Amen? Amen? Listen. Sometimes the reason say, go and fast for one week. It's your doubt, too, that's putting you in trouble. Your doubt has brought you into hunger. See, you can doubt. Pastor, pray for me over this thing. I want to pray. I have the anointing stirred up. But I'm seeing your doubt. As a big caterpillar wanting to repel it. What will I say to you? Go and fast for two weeks. Depend on the, how the doubt is. If the doubt is a small saloon car, fast for two days. If the doubt is a big caterpillar, fast for one week. Massive caterpillar, fast for one month. When you finish fasting, come. So the faith will have free course to do what God wants to do. Amen. You're still here? Okay, so come back to Romans. Come back to Romans. So, we said with, with faith as well, you could also endure uh, tribulation. But this, this also has something he does. This also has something he does. Three. Three. We're reading three. Hallelujah. Then it says, and not only so, but, but we glory in tribulation also. Watch this. Knowing that tribulation worketh what? Patience. 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 He worketh patience. Next verse. Glory to God. And patience experience and experience hope. Now, next verse. Watch. And hope maketh not ashamed. Hold on. See, eh? hi. When the Lord was talking to me about this a long time ago, I just remember what He said to me. Listen. To quote the word of God wrongly. It's more dangerous than not even knowing it. It is better not to know it than to know it wrongly and quote it wrongly. I'm very serious. Just come and say, hope make it not ashamed. Huh? That's dangerous. Hey. Wait, let me ask you a question. Have you seen people who were hoping to be rich and they died poor? Have you not seen them? So hope really make it a shame. I'm telling you. Hope what? Make it a shame. If there are no substance, he make it a shame. Look at this story. And hope make it not a shame. Before, because the love of God is, hold on, go up. 
There was a storyline to this hope making not ashamed. Are you there? What did he say? Go before, go before that. Go before that. Four, four. And patience, experience. What is experience? That's a substance. Hello, somebody. Is that not a substance? And patience, experience, and experience, hope. So, so look at this. If there is no, if there is no experience before hope, hope will make a shame. It is the experience before hope. And what is the experience of the word of God? James will put it properly. Count it all joy when you go through diverse tests. And then he says, he says what? He says, that will what? Do what? Develop patience. Because that's James writing the same thing. How did he conclude it? He says that you're entirely wanting nothing. Why? Because the world has totally furnished you. Preaching good? So, if there are no experience of God's word, no conviction from a, a substance of God's word, your hope will be in vain. I'm just hoping that things will be fine. Why? I'm just hoping. Ah, okay. How many of those cases you have seen that things really became fine? How many of those cases? If it's 2%, 3%, of course, that's not past mark. Are you there? Say, so why, why would things be fine? I just know. No, guy, okay, you can't know. What's the experience? What's the substance? You see, you're not a Christian. We walk by faith and not by sight. But, but they say faith has a substance of things. What's the substance? I'm telling you now what to put to all those spiritual, spiritual, unintelligent people. You didn't read for the exam. Have faith. I'll pass. How? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. <laughs> <laughs> I hope to pass. You are, you are going to fail. Because you did not read. So, what's the only way, watch this, what's the only way we can pass the exam when we did not read? Let me teach you good tonight. There are only two ways you can pass the exam if you did not read. Okay, the only Spirit said three ways now. I know you want to learn this one because you like not to read. But let me finish before you begin to think of that. Only three ways. Amen? Number one way. They brought the exam all of a sudden. You were, not, you were not notified. God will do miracle. Why? He keeps his angels charge over us. The Holy Spirit is our extraordinary strategies. No, he puts the other one. He calls it a standby. I was not notified. That's number one. Number two, you were notified, somehow you forgot, or you were really engaged by some stuff of the Lord. Listen, no, oh, so you hear me well. I'm not quoting me wrongly. And the Lord did not tell you to go and prepare. Because while you are even engaged with the Lord's business, you can say, do this one small, go and read. If he tells you, do this one small, go and read, and you did not read, you will fail. But the Lord, you heard the Lord told you and said, don't read. This one has to be done for me. Huh? Then when you go, it will do a miracle. And if you did not do a miracle, and you heard God, then you have to endure the tribulation to fail and write the exam again. I have to balance it. Because that God told you not to read does not mean you always pass. It can also mean you will fail. Am I preaching good? Yes, sir. Are you sure I'm preaching good? Yes, sir. You people don't like to hear the truth. In this church, we preach it. Truth. Yes, sir. My name is Pastor Preston. Yes, <laughs> so we'll tell you the way it is. And then the third one, the third one, you made the mistake, you, you realize it. No, you are not defending, no. Baba, not true. You see your boy, not a year old. You're not, you're not clear read. But you see, eh? I know if you write this exam again. If you do this one this time, I promise you, <laughs> next time, I'll take the lesson. Now, we cannot guarantee, but miracle can happen. Miracle might still not happen. 
So those are the three ways. You see that it's complex. So read your book. <laughs> and let God. So you have a proper substance. Amen. Those are the only three ways. I'm serious. I'm serious. Amen. Amen. Okay. So if there are no experience, help will make us ashamed. Have I strengthened you and not let the devil fool you next time? Make some sense? Yes, next verse. Glory to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So he says, hope make another shame. Then he says, because, because, because the love of God is shared abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost, which worketh in us. Now, the love of God shared abroad in our heart, the love of God, listen here, the love of God shared abroad in our heart is what? This is Romans 5, 5. Huh? Go to Ephesians chapter number 3. Let's see it. So you don't say, I, made, I gave you a statement. Ephesians 3, let's read from 17. Glory to God. Quick. That Christ may dwell in your heart. Uh-huh. That Christ may dwell in your heart. You see heart? Dwell in heart. But this time he didn't say love. He now says Christ. Um, but Christ is love. I know. That's even far, far derivation. But let's leave that. That Christ may dwell in your heart. How? By faith. Uh-huh. That ye be rooted and grounded in. Uh-huh. 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 So all this plenty story different here and there. Christ in our heart is love in our heart. Huh? Hello? By faith. Now abided hope, faith, and love. And the greater of this is love. They abide together. When you find God's faith, you will find love there. You will find hope there. If it's God's faith. Remember I taught you that recently. If it's God's faith. There, there is God's faith and there is faith that is not God, that God will comply by. Let me explain this. You won't like this. If a thief believe that he will come and rob you successfully with your security. If he can have faith, huh? he will succeed. So oh, you didn't like what I just said? I told you it's a universal principle. Did I not tell you just now? Yes. Now watch. If you that have that house, you are a Christian, and you doubt, the thief will succeed. Even though you are the advantageous. The thief the thief's faith will only not work when your faith is activated. Who understands what I just preached? So, if I and an unbeliever get on a thing, we're going for a job interview, the unbeliever believes he will have the job. And I don't believe I will have the job. He will have it. Can I shock you? And it is your father that made him have it. <laughs> father. Ah, are you sure you understand what I'm saying? Okay. There's a story that Pastor Semed don't like this story. Pastor Austin don't like this story. So since they don't like it, I don't tell it. But I believe now they would have liked it because they would have grown. <laughs> Praise the Lord. A king carried his child, only child, heir to the throne, killed it. God turned his back over his people. What do you not explain it? Huh? What do you expect? Because his people is taking him for granted. <laughs> Amen? Okay, so what would the children of God would have done against that situation? They would have had faith. They were used to God always helping them to win a fight. They were used to God. So they could not even hear. You know, like the way you get used to God and say, I don't need to sow seed. God is love. And this, that, that, that. Then you are slipping into selfishness, greed, and all that you don't know. Then one trouble will show up. You don't realize that at some point you used to sow seed that it was working, though. You know, so well, like, I don't know the principle around here, but I got to sow seed. Listen, I'm not, I'm not trying to preach too much. Hold on. Let me say this very quickly as the Lord is saying it. Let one trouble hit you. And then you empty your account and sow it as a seed. Or you're trusting God for something and you empty, it, empty your account and you sow it as a seed. Huh? Watch. The miracle of your face to come. I'll tell you why. Hold on. You cannot empty your account and sow it as a seed and not have it. You know why? Money is so powerful that it is what keeps you alive. That you will not trek home is that you have transport faith. 
that you will not starve is that you have money. That you will not pay, that you can, that the landlord will not embarrass you is that you have money. Now, hold on. Now, your brain, they walk home. You know all these things that money can do for you. You convex, give them, say, I damn the consequences to God. Then your faith comes still low. How? No, you don't understand. You say, you can't serve God and mammon. You don't understand because mammon is God himself. Money. Say, I'm a Christian growing in the spirit. And you're not sowing seeds. Now lie. You're not growing in the spirit. And somebody can even quote it. You cannot serve God and mammon. But you are even serving. The quarter is serving mammon. That's why it's hard for you to release it. Are you hearing me? I told you in this church, and I'm going to say it again. Once the Lord tells me to give, I give before thinking about it. Because if your brain is too, if your brain is too intelligent, to give is hard though. If you want to give, you just calculate all the expenditure. People like Pastor Jane as accountant that know all the, all the things. They just calculate expenditure, real current this one, or current this one. <laughs> when you finish calculating all of them, you will not find yourself explaining to the Lord and say, I really want to give. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Am I preaching good? So the Lord told me to go to um, Alaba International Market to buy some, some stuff for our camp program. <laughs> Hallelujah. So he tricked me. No, no, I put it properly. See? So I drove there. So I thought, in my mind, I thought that as I'm going there, God will make people to sow the money. So I got the price what we're going to buy for church. Nobody sold the money. So the Lord says, every account, church, personal, close it and buy it. You know, that's when your brain will now come and say, Lagos Rentage is coming. Diesel, car park. What about the cooking for camp? What about this one? Are you sure? This camera is more important than the cooking for the program. Who wants what I'm saying now? That's intelligence. That's intelligence. That's what you should do when God has not spoken. Who wants what I'm saying? Yes, We're teaching, am I teaching faith good tonight? Yes, That's what you should do when the Lord has not spoken. Listen, because faith is not foolishness. Now, I'm telling you to empty your account. If you empty your account as a routine character, you are a fool. Are you hearing me? Are you there? How should a man live? Follow me now. How should he live? He lives by principle. If you work or you know how much you earn every month, you should have a budget. I'm preaching it to you now. And I've told you that many times in this talk. You should have a budget. How to spend. Simple budget. In that budget, maybe I'll just run it very quickly. You have what we call your expenditure. Your expenditure should not take more than 60%. Let me do it very quickly, right? This is the normal way to live. If your expenditure is, is taking more than 60%, hear me, you are living a life that is above your capacity. Some people's expenditure is even taking 150%. You go and rent house in Lekki, and your salary is 50000 I don't know how you tend to pay. Uh, uh, no, okay, I hear what they just said now. Uh, and then you will now hear the stupidity and say, I have faith. Wait, your salary can be 50000 and you go and rent us in Lekki because the Lord said go and. And the proof that God told you to go and is that before that month we end, another work will come. That's the proof. But based on your greed or upgrade or man, you don't arrive. Are you hearing that now? You will keep begging and begging and begging and begging is not a principle for survivor. When you beg the first time, they are willing to give you. You beg the second time, they are willing to give you small. You beg the third time, they grumble to give you. At the fourth time, they are avoiding you now because you have become a nuisance. So begging is not a strategy. It's just an emergency rescue. Once it becomes your character, it's foolishness. They will soon start avoiding you. I don't know if I just approach it and say, please, can you just help me? You'll be happy to give me. Ah, most of the time, your pastor. Second time, I don't know, maybe something went wrong. Third time, you know, say, bless that church. <laughs> Fourth time, I beg, tell pastor, see, I know the house. Fifth time, that useless pastor, don't call me again. You have not had it useless. 
because begging is not a strategy. Hear me now. The only strategy for survival is rendering goods and services. Can I preach good? Yes, sir. Not even only for you, including Pastor Preston. Paul had one to offer. Peter had one. They all, they all had jobs, skills. A pastor only ceases to work when comfortably his work can cater for his need. Then his work is now intensified in serving the brethren. God never supports idleness of every kind. Even when the church is big enough to respond to your need and you are sleeping and idling, it's a sin. If your work cannot respond to your need, your brethren and the rest of them, then you must serve them. What are the work? Every morning, those who are giving you, you pray for them. You will call their name. Don't just generalize. Everybody who's responding to this ministry, Father, in the name of Jesus, bless them, bless them. No, call their name. When I pray, sometimes when I find out your names, it's because I want to pray for you. For, pray, I want to pray specifically for you. In the name of Jesus, I bless you. Oh, yeah, thank you for Brother Shegun. In the name of Jesus. Then I begin to call many things about Brother Shegun. Many things. Now, not every day I call everybody's name in the ministry. That means I'll be praying 10 hours every day. I raise my hand to pray. I pray for Lagos Church. I pray for Benin. Now, as I'm praying for Lagos Church, they will be who the Lord is driving me to. Now, let me say this. And God will hardly drive me to you. If I don't know your face, if I don't know your honor. You know people don't like the truth. And I always preach the truth. You shall know the truth that will make you. It takes extra love for God for God to remember a non-giver in the church. I'm not preaching money this morning. You know that. And I don't preach money. But I'm telling you the truth. Can we show you with Jesus? Jesus one time was walking and a man was pursuing Jesus to be healed. Jesus didn't answer the guy. What did they tell Jesus before he responded? Who can remember? He says, this man, they caught Jesus' attention and then they said something to Jesus. They said, this man did what for us? What did they say he do? He said, this man, who knows this? Who knows? Who knows? I want to be sure if you, if you don't know, we'll go and read it. They told Jesus, say, this man built, what did Jesus not do? And so what? I'm not moved by what people do. <laughs> what did Jesus do? Hello? I told someone, I said, when Zacchaeus climbed up, wanted to see Jesus up, listen, Jesus walked up to Lazarus, uh, Zacchaeus and says, go home. I'll be with you this night. I'll come see you. Do you know why he went? I'll bust your bubble. Follow me closely. Do you know why he went? He did not go because Zacchaeus was a good man. He was a bad man. He oppressed the people. That's number one. Number two. He didn't go because Zacchaeus was a rich man. I will explain to you. Because the rich young, young, young ruler came to meet him and he turned the guy back. He didn't go because of those two purposes. There were two purposes that made Jesus to go. And the two went together, not just one of the purposes. The two complete the circle. Follow me closely. Number one, the willingness for Zacchaeus to want to see him, for which he climbed up. Not only that, plus, and, like you say, cum. His willingness to give everything he had to Christ. He saw that one. Proof, go read the statement. While Jesus showed up and they were there, he went to open where he was hiding all the money and carried it. Now you are spoiling my sermon today. And that's what somebody said before I came here. 
He said, when you see their face now, the salmon will spoil. I don't know why you're spoiling my salmon. I've not started preaching my salmon. And my time is going. You guys should take your time in Lagos Church. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Someone I don't like to preach. Pastor, Pastor Lamb was begging me to preach this sermon. One time, I think it was in Lagos. I said, sorry, sir, sorry, sir. I want to just tell you something. I said, sir, what was that? Maybe we went to the mechanic. He said, sir, you have to be telling people to give you. <laughs> He said, because I know he works for me. Oh. If something is just doing me like this, I'll just package myself and send it to you. And everything will just change. He said, so I don't understand that one when I say we give out of love. Me, my own is not. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Lamb is hearing me now. You see, that's the problem we have. I'll just disgrace all of you. Last week was Pastor Zua. <laughs> now I'm disgracing Pastor Lamb. See, we will not be talking with pastor again. We come back. No, we need to learn. After all, people were disgraced in the Bible. That's how you knew many things that can happen. Amen. I said, I have heard. <laughs> so today, like, you're pulling that anointing. You're pulling that anointing. Amen. Amen. Are you following that? So let's analyze, because I like to analyze Bible stories closely. You know why? He shows you the ways of God. He shows you the ways. Because we already know the way of this world that we've been programmed. But we need to know God's own way. We need to know it. Once you know God's way and you adopt it, that's what it is to be righteous. Righteousness is not the, the rightness you know. No, it's the rightness of Christ. That's why I call it the love of the Father. He didn't say any kind of love. He has to be the love of the Father. Because some people want to serve God in their terms. God, this is how I understand this. God, take, take me like this. God, no! You read the word. You uncover God's ways. And make it your way. You, that's why it says learning Christ. You are learning the ways of Christ. It says Moses knew his ways. And today, 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 not today. That faith is supposed to please God. I, I want to show you what is most important. As different from what they have taught you. You think it's to do right by your strength that is most important. Lie, lie. It's a lie. No. It's to believe right. Just write it before we can explain it. Believing right huh, is to God most important than doing right. So if you do right and you believe wrongly, you are wrong. If you believe right and you do wrong, you are right. And eventually you will start doing right. Did you hear what I just said? So, Zacchaeus. So he saw what he did. Now, that story is not just only with Zacchaeus. Remember, uh, one of the, the disciples of Jesus, too, was a taskmaster. Matthew, right? Or called Levi. You saw after Jesus called him. Now, notice, let me, let me say this to you so you can know very well. The people hated Zacchaeus. But Jesus loved him. The people hated Levi. No, you didn't know that part. Let me ask you. If you're a business person, do you, do you love all those task collectors? M.C. Oloma and his boys. <laughs> so Zacchaeus was like M.C. Oloma. <laughs> Levi was like, which of them, he put their name. That, that's what they were. Now, oh, you don't understand. Read your Bible. They were collecting money from their people and giving to the Roman. From their own people. And you like them? Like collecting money and giving to Buhari. Huh? No, you know there are some names, like I just mentioned them now. Once you hear those names, what comes to your mind? That's why they can't walk alone. So the people hated them. Jesus can't like them. You know, scatter your theology. Because he tells you, listen here, listen here. He tells you, that the ability to abandon what you love, that you should love, for another is prime. Money is what they loved. When he, when he called Levi, Levi took the money he had through a party. Through a party. Don't be angry. You see, an unbeliever will show up here now. I like to say, a politician or a, what's he called now, a Yahoo boy. Once it's time to give, now he will give. But a Christian will be dragging. Because a Christian is too full of his mind. 
Let me say this. Do you even know that the things that politicians and Yahoo boy does to succeed, Christians are not even doing it in the Christian way to succeed. The kind of mind that they have, you don't even have that kind of faith. The kind of sacrificial giving that they have, you don't even have that generosity. Preaching good? You don't. But can I shock you? That's why I told you it's a universal law. Even that, listen, listen. That's why you say that all Yahoo boys are not the same. Some are prospering more than the other. Go and check them. It's the mind difference. Some have more mind. Have more sense. You told the, the Yahoo boy, say, come, come, come. You have to kill the person you love. Ah, I cannot kill it. Okay, don't worry. But you can come and kill Fao. And get to, he now kills Fao. He's now picking 20,000, 40,000 for killing Fao. The one who kills his mother. You know they will not pick the same amount. <laughs> Preaching good? Yes, sir. Are you still here? Yes, sir. No, it's true. Look at it. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows. Did you see that the Bible quantified it? Whatsoever. I'm quoting Galatians 6 now. Whatsoever. Talk to me somebody. Are you hearing that? Yes, no, I know you don't know that. But you, you can quote it, but you don't agree with it. Whatsoever a man so. That's number one. That's in Galatians 6. Let's show you another one. First Corinthians, Second Corinthians, uh, Second Corinthians 9. He that giveth sparingly shall what? He that giveth bountifully. No, you can quote it, but you don't understand it. Because your bountiful is sparing. Bountifully. Preaching good? First Corinthians 9. As God has... 19, sorry. 19, yep. Yeah. As God has blessed you. Or 16, there about. The ending of First Corinthians. As God has... The ending of First Corinthians 1, the last chapter. As God has blessed every man, let him give. As. That's number what now? Number 3, right? Number 4. Timothy. Is it 17? 5, 17, if I'll be right? Or 19? What did he say? Those who are rich, let them be poor in giving. Are you seeing quantifying? Are you, there? Are you seeing quantifying? No, that's number what now? Number four. Number five. He looked into the treasury. Jesus himself. I'm just trying to think. You want to give an offer and I'm looking inside. Hey. It will go viral. And Pastor President had become so broke that I had to look into the treasury how much they were giving. Almighty Father, the, the selfless God, Jesus, he was looking as they were bringing the offering. That's how he knew how much the widow gave. He was looking. Of course, you know that the widow did not give the biggest. People gave the biggest. He didn't sing them. But he quantified what they gave to how much they had. So he saw the widow, how much she gave. And he says, wow. Made a salmon out of it. They called it widow's might. All that she had. And I like to complete this story. The big part is not only that she gave all that she had. But according to the Jewish custom, widows don't give. Widows are given to. The treasury in the synagogue is to take care of the priests, the synagogue, the widows, and some other few groups. So in other words, as you they give for synagogue, the widows go there and say, ah, they go send us something. That's why, even, listen, after they started the church. The practice continued. So Paul had to define the kind of widows they will give to in Timothy. So I know you know that we give widows, but it's not just to give any widow. The widows too, before they became widows, they should have been generous in the church. They should have been given to the church. So he gave a lot of condition. I don't like to read it. If I read that scripture, I like to hold post truth and say, you own too much. Because that condition, only a few can pass it. Okay? To define things more properly. But so, so that's why it, 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 
it, he shook the mind of God. As he took all that she had to come and give. What does your giving reflect? Your heart for God. Your heart for God. To the measure you cannot give is the measure your heart is not with the Lord. Are you writing down? Yes. To the measure you cannot give. Listen, that's why you cannot be backsliding and be enjoying to give. Giving will be struggle. Just think now. Because everybody has backslidden one time in their life. Think, as I'm talking now, all the time you backslidden, whether you were generous. Think when you are on fire for God. You are looking for need to give. When you were, when, when you were when, as you are growing in Christ, 2 Corinthians 8 will be the order. See? Sir, yes, are you doing? Do you have a need? Um, I, I don't know, exactly know what you mean, but, but uh, I, I, I'm just feeling in my spirit that to give. You did become spiritual, that's why. Because even when you are kind of, they're not telling you there's a need in the church, you're not saying, that, don't worry, daddy, God will do it. We are praying. So don't you think we need to increase the fasting time so we can call it for, but the money, will, then they won't call for, they your account too. Preaching good? This is, this is scripture that the church does not preach. Godly equality. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't preach it. It showed up twice. In Acts 2 from 43 to 45, and then in 1 Corinthians, that one was with Peter, and then in 2 Corinthians 8 from 13 to 14, it showed up two times. Don't even open it. Leave it. I can't even preach it right now. <laughs> the church can't preach it. And that's why the church has become a place of competition. As about as against collaboration. The early church, the prosperity of one was the prosperity for all, and the suffering of one was the suffering for all. Not as a pattern of laziness, because it says those who will not work, let them not eat. So if you also have the character of laziness, we will not respond to you. I was sharing some money. I was sharing some money. As the Lord instructed me. So I said to some of you, I said, give me names of people who you think need in the church so we can send to them. Not because we had money, but because we're doing equality as the Lord leads. So some people sent me some names and all that. I read I didn't respond. Not because I, I don't like them. In fact, some of them, I love them very well. But the Holy Spirit didn't put green. He didn't put green. Now, can I shock you? Even at the time, even at the time, we were responding like that, to people and giving them money. 20,000, 40,000, 50,000. Listen to me. My car had four to, fit, to fix. That was far lesser than that money. My car did not have green. No, you didn't understand. <laughs> I would say, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. The money has come now. Yeah, I just have needs. That's what you said. Lord? Yeah, so my car. After all, that's, you know, you know I can spiritualize it. That's the car we used to drive the missionaries to Lagos. Do you want Pastor Martins not to be comfortable in the car? Or Pastor Ophomar's camera to be shaking up at night? You know, I can, I can dramatize it to the Lord and say, oh, so God cannot talk otherwise. God, God cannot talk otherwise. So, we put this first on this one. That's to be carnally minded. Amen. Amen. Are, you, are you following me this morning? Preaching good? Yes. Glory to God. Talk on that another time. How you have to be led by the Spirit of God. Otherwise, you go and give a beggar money. Who has more money than you? <laughs> and you think you have done good to the Lord. You didn't know you were just carnally driven. You were driven by pity. And I said, pity is not love. Yes, but love can pity. Who, who God I just said now? Yes, some, of, some of your generosity has been stupidity. Let's, let's bring a proper balance. You're following this? Go read a God. Okay, okay, let's enter the sermon. Our time has gone. Amen. So it says, love or get fixed. Where did we stop before we moved up and down and we were preaching another sermon? I thought I was not going to have his service today, but confirm now we'll have it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? Yes, I'm getting blessed myself. Are you not enjoying the sermon? Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Okay, see now I've just carried the book now. Let's preach the sermon now. What is it we wanted to preach? What's the, the sermon? I told you when we started now. Are you tired? No, sir. If you show tiredness, we'll do another one hour. 
It's perfect love, believers, and I'm the president of the ministry. Yes, sir. Pastor, I cannot try this. Me, I can try it. Because he, he answers to someone. Me, I, don't, I only answer to God. So the only God I can say stop. Uh, can I preach that? What are we supposed to preach if you don't know that one? First, punishment. You see how, how people ginger. Pastor Matt is just say without faith. Ah, God, I've added another extra 30 minutes to the sermon. And nothing will happen. Without faith is impossible. You know where the scripture is, isn't it? So let's go there. Hebrews chapter number 12, 11 verse number 6. Glory! But you've learned so many things, isn't it? Even if you stop now, you've learned. Glory to God. Amen, 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 amen. So I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I love the word. Someone asked me, um, I think it was your Friday or so, or Wednesday or so. Okay, it was Wednesday. He said, you have preached three sermons and put on Facebook. Which one will you now preach on Wednesday? I said, when you start the service, you will know that I will still not finish the message I want to preach on Wednesday. Because when you love God, because I was thinking, Jesus preached from morning to night. The people now got tired. He did miracles so they would not go. What was he teaching? Paul taught from morning to night. Utica was fed down and died. He rose him from the dead. He continued to teach. Oh, God. Someone has died. It's an indication that they don't tire. The guy continues to the next day. Because some of you can use sense a lot. Say, you see? No, no, I'm just thinking. I just started preaching. Somebody just fainted. I am very sure. Pastor Zua, Pastor Adesua, Pastor Jane, they will hold meeting against me. I'm telling you. Do not say, what's the best way we can tell Pastor that this sermon is too long for the sake of the member? And you see, God gave us an indication by someone fainting. I think we should, we should understand the spirit. The spirit is communicating. I, I, we are not saying Pastor is wrong, but sometimes you know someone can be overzealous without considering, then one, one of them will now say, hey, you know, not even that, we, we, we like it, we don't have a problem, but you know, the babes in the church, the babes, the first timers in the church, the people that gathered that Jesus taught, they were not former timers. Sir. What do you say? They are not from, were they former timers? They were not former timers. Head them tonight. So what you're even trying to do, you're not the first that started it. Philip had done it before. It was Philip. No, 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 notice, the crowd didn't say, Master, we are hungry. Master, we are hungry. It was Philip who said, Daddy, the way they see their face. Hunger don't they come. Let us send them. <laughs> because whether that, whether don't they change it? Whether don't they change it? Whether... So, <laughs> praise the Lord. So you can choose to be a Philip or choose to be a Jesus. Say, so, Pastor, don't they hear what? My papa don't hear what now. I, I, who, who, should I follow you? Hear what? I'll be a seeker friendly gospel, and then we are not achieving the will of the Father. No, I can't hear you. I, can't, I have to hear God. And if you talk too much, I give you scripture. Hear ye him, not hear ye them. Pastor yes, Matthew is quoting it now. If that scripture not belief for you, I'll give you another one. Galatians 1. If I, if I, do I begin to impress men? If I impress men, I'm not a servant of God. Then you will rest. Amen? Amen. Okay, so let's preach. Put your eye there now. Memory verse. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Hold on. So, firstly, I investigated this scripture and realized that it was not written any other place. And I taught you that recently when we're dealing with, it was, okay, it was the last service. Um, that was Wednesday, I guess, when we're dealing with several other subjects about the kingdom of God, if you still remember. And I said, when you find things like this, it is either not correct or we have to uncover how it's correct within scriptures, with many other expressions. You remember that? Because the law says, in the mouth of two or three witness, a truth is established. However, if you study this and check on the scriptures, you're going to see so many spread around. We can't even, we can't even go through all of the scriptures. Just reading them without explaining. The sermon will not permit. Just reading all of them. So we'll just take a few and do a good exegesis. A few Right? As the Lord leads us. Or I will just try to explain and then put the scriptures through and then you get them. But look at it. It says, but without faith it's impossible to please God. Now when I read this, I started to think very deeply. It didn't say without works it is impossible to please God. It didn't say without right doing it is impossible to please God. Rather it says without faith. Then in the line of that conversation, I, right, when you study through your scriptures, all that Jesus used, all the people that Jesus used, they were not perfect people. 
You see, unfortunately, in life today, we work hard to be perfect as against work hard to be a people of faith. If you succeed by becoming perfect in your working hard, you go against scripture. You go against scripture. Because it says, let no flesh glory in my presence. 1 Corinthians 1 29. Let no flesh glory in my presence. That's one. Then it will not be of faith. It will now be of works. Are you following me? Now, this is why everybody can become a Christian. Listen. The agenda that Satan sponsors with these religious churches is why the church is in hypocrisy. The church tells you, don't do this, do this, don't do this, do this, right? Is it not what the Old Testament did? And Hebrews says, with all that they did, they could not make anyone righteous, and then the, the law was considered what? Useless. Is it not what we're doing in many of the churches today? But that's not what the Bible told us to do. Whatever, listen, let me ask you. What do you really in your inner man want to do with God? You really want to please him. Am I right? What's the highest demand? Is that we please him. Now he tells us how to please him. It's his faith. He didn't call it work. What is faith? Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So, so, so watch this. We hear something to believe something. To believe something. And once we believe that thing, after, by the power of that thing, we become of that thing. Listen. You were not bad because they told you to be bad. In fact, if anybody tells you to be bad, you will not be bad. Nobody wants to be bad. Including some of you who don't like people to be bad, but you are bad. People become bad by what they heard often and the spirit of what they heard man to them. It says the whole world works in wickedness. You have read it and the world still continues to work in wickedness. The world by policies and systems and structures is trying to fight against wickedness. But yet even those who are drafting the policies are still wicked. That's why the, the EFC people were catching people for they are collecting I did not say anything but you can be filling in the gap. Am I right? The legal system that should be that should be the hope of the common man they are no longer the you can co complete the the verbal reasoning. The judges and are, are you there? Can I tell you something? And then you show up in Arise News, Abati, uh, uh, Rufai, Ayo. They're analyzing, analyzing. Let me tell you what the Holy Spirit said to me this morning. Oh, so sweet. He says, listen to all those people just to enjoy their intelligence. Analysis will not change this country. No, it will not change this country. Who knows what I just said? Who understands what I just said? It will not change this country. The people who are even doing that will be watching and say, hey, I'll bet you can't talk. Group five will go so come slap you. You're on the too much. He will not change it. Until a man's heart changes. Preaching good? And never you believe that the Western words are better too. The hand is just coded. I wish I could talk a little bit, but let's focus on our Bible. But you know what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. So, you became bad. Not because you intended to be bad. But because you were subjected in a bad environment. Or a bad doctrines. That's why you became bad. Do you know, forgive me, that the average African guy is growing up intending to become what he's fighting against. You know why you're fighting the government? Because you're not there. 
No, I'll give you maybe a few persons. Number one, that Nollywood that in Lagos State. Desmond, idiot. You know the guy, right? What was he saying before he entered politics? What is he saying now? Yeah, yeah, bello. Let us give the young people a chance. He is the youngest governor in Nigeria. He even shocked the old ones. <laughs> he shocked them. Because the younger ones are now more even technological. <laughs> Am I preaching good? Yes, sir. Now listen. The problem is internal. It is within a structure. When you, you think that because they wicked you, you will now be kind. No. That's why you'll be wicked. He takes God for people to be kind. So I'm going somewhere. Follow me now. Right? Watch this. He said, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. Then the next part now reads, for he that cometh to God must do right. No, it's do right that they tell you in church. God did not answer you because you're not doing right. Listen to me. Oh, dear Lord, your prayers were in that because you didn't have faith. Not because you didn't do right. Yes, sir. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. And if your right brought the result, it was not your right. It was your right who convinced you into faith. And if your right is convincing you that it is your right, the result will not come. You know why? Because you will boast of that result. No, you didn't get it. So if I do right, and I use that right to get the result, it is because I, 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 that right produced faith in me. But if the right now wants me to put me in a place where I say, you see, if you don't do right, you cannot have this and all that, I'll get into trouble. Because I'm not boasting in my strength. And humans are free. And humans by strength cannot receive results. It's by faith. Are you still here? by faith. Otherwise, in the hall of faith, we'll not be having Rehab. We'll not be having that lady. Did you read what he wrote about her? He says, by faith, he hid two spies. Prostitute, right? Amen? Amen. And you know Jesus came from there too. Glory to God. They say, say, well, Holy Mary, Mother of God, Mary was holy. That's why, watch, watch. Mary was holy. That's why she could give birth to Jesus. Rehab was in the, in the, in the family, the lineage. So prostituted the lineage. And I said to someone recently, I said, if Mary was so holy, how come she knew a man, Joseph? Hello? Who was that I'm saying? The Lord, I said, from a child, she separated herself unto the Lord. Why she can't get boyfriend? Joseph. No, just to show you some of you, even holy past Mary, oh, the boyfriend, she get them even before she entered teen. You see how unholy Mary be? That's the one to say, and, and, and she was holy, she did not sleep with anybody. When be the time when you did talk? Some of you, before you sleep with somebody, you don't reach when something. Mary not reach like that now. Preaching good. So, Holy Mary, pray for us. Mary, not to pray for anybody. She said, don't answer for her own crime. <laughs> Amen. Doesn't pray for nobody. And that religion is so strong. Mary does not pray for anybody. The Bible only said, Jesus our advocate. And let me also explain, so before you now think, Jesus is in heaven praying to the Father. No, no, it is the Spirit of God. Make it intercession for us with groaning that cannot be uttered. So Jesus is not physically praying. Jesus is the prayer, not a praying. I know where you're looking at. First John 2. I, if we enter there now, the service will not close. Let's stay here. But take it. Another day I will explain it. Just the way I said hope, I've explained hope now. Another day we'll come there. Because, wait, if Jesus is praying, who is he praying to? 
Jesus only prayed to something when he was on earth. Because all prayers come to him. Uh, wait, wait. Can I preach? When you go to heaven, you will not see God. Uh, you're shocked. Wait now. Wait. It says, Jesus, I will sit on a great white throne and judge everybody. The white throne seat is the seat of the Father. So I'm trying to think, where, how will he sit? Will the Father stand up for him? <laughs> he will not come and sit and judge everybody. No, no, use your common sense now. That, that, that should be common. Eh? No, think. No, does, does king stand up for his child to sit on his throne? Physical king. So it makes you know that he is the real king. Now, this is where the confession comes. I'll help you understand. The father and the son, they are one. The son is the father that assumed flesh. So there is no other God but him. Wait, wait, think, think, think. At the name of Jesus, every nation, but at the name of Jesus. Even your salvation is sealed on the name of Jesus. No, think now. Who go love in Peking so much? Come give in Peking all those kind things. If it not be the Peking. So where is the place of Almighty? Confusing you tonight? So when you show up, you see Jesus. Amen? Amen. Because he, he wore flesh. Mary borrowed him flesh to show up on the earth. I know why you are. That's why. So in that, your common sense, that's why you're honoring Mary so much. Instead of honor the saint and honor, honor the priest. Let me shock you. When we see him, it would not even be us, that one, with the body of Mary. Listen. That's where we have an advantage even above the Jews. The Jesus, see, you are distracting me someone now. The way you looked at me, I'm making expressions here now. The Jesus, can I preach good? That ascended it's not the same Jesus that we descend. Hold on. He took a form to exist upon the earth. But notice what the Bible says. It says, as he is, so we will be. Hold on. Right? That's so we will become. Hold on. Hold on. If Jesus will look like the one Mary gave birth to, there will not be a need for a transformation of our being. Because our own system will still be legal. But if our own system is still legal, because he also sustained a particular system, then we will go to heaven not being worn externally, even though we are being worn internally. Then exactly will not be like him externally. We will be like him internally. Are you confused? So, when we leave here, that's why, if you say, I'm cute, I'm not cute, don't worry, there's hope. <laughs> when we leave, right, we will, that there's something called the celestial body. We'll pick up another body that now resembles his. Now, listen, that body will pick up of his does not have any affiliation or genetical uh, uh, structure of anything of flesh. So he will not be red, he will not be white, he will not be black, he will be heavenly. So that way, it will now be clear how we are family with him. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Glory to God. Preaching good this morning? Yes, sir. You're learning a lot. Say amen. Glory. Glory. So when you show up, you'll not be Bini, you'll not be uh, Yoruba, you'll not be anything. You'll be as he is. Glory! Glory. Glory. Then you'll not realize, listen now, then you'll not realize that your child is not really your child. Then you'll not realize that your wife is not really your wife. Then you'll not realize that that Christian brother that you just call bro, 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 is the real brother. Glory to God! Then, that scripture where Jesus said, who is my father and my mother? Who is my mother and my siblings? He will become of reality because you will now see it. That by what we believed, 
we became family. By what we rejected, we were not family. And by how people came closer to the word, they were more family with God. So who is your elder brother? It's not the one that your father gave birth to first. It is the one who had grown further with the word. The one who resembles him more of the word. Who is your younger brother? The one who is still learning God's word. Who is your spiritual father? God Almighty or Christ. And then who holds it for him upon the earth? Pastor Preston. Because once we leave this earth, I cease to be your father. Uh, you don't understand. I now stand to be your elder brother before Almighty God. Because I was just holding for him upon the earth. That's why it says, call no man father upon the earth. Amen. Amen. So sometimes you hear Paul will call, Paul will call Timothy a brother. And then many times he will call him a son. Because he's both a brother and a son. In a short time, I've just said something very deep. Did you hear it? Yes, Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You always know how to mess up my notes, isn't it? Lagos Church. I can have more articulate someone in Benin. I don't know why. Well, you guys, see now, see prodigal son here, yeah, nothing. Uh, oh, see everything here. Thank you. Clap for yourself. <laughs> so, I'll come on the e service by God's grace to try to see if I can do justice on this thing. Stand up on your feet. Glory to God. But you were blessed. We said a lot of things that, that, that could bless. Amen. Give God praise and thank Him. Glory to God. Oh, just thank Him. What a beautiful name you are. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we're one with Him. Glory to God. Shandi labe marunde keba sahalandis. Glory to God, glory to God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Give the praise and bless the name of the Lord. Thank you for what you have heard. What a beautiful name is. What a beautiful name is. The name.